Welcome to the Messy Middle Road Trip Podcast. Today, we're talking with Beth Nelson of Ignited Women. Beth is an inspiration and leader for women who are ready to awaken into the fullest version of themselves at midlife and leave a meaningful impact on the world. As a midlife mentor, confused and disengaged women in their 50s and 60s hire Beth to build the necessary confidence to create a life full of passion, purpose, and authenticity. I love this quote from Beth that she shares with her followers. I stopped hiding myself from the world and reclaimed my big and bold self. I know that living my most vibrant and fulfilled life didn't stop when I hit 50. I decided I was just getting started. Her workshops, retreats, private coaching, and online programs have helped hundreds of women to uncover their unconscious beliefs and feel more fulfilled in midlife and beyond. Beth created Ignited Women to unleash the greatly underutilized wisdom of midlife women into the world and foster a cultural shift in how they are seen and valued. We know you're going to love our conversation with Beth today. So grab your sunglasses, call Shotgun, and let's hit the road for another episode. I'm Sandra. And I'm Nicole. And we're entrepreneurs. Wives. A mom. A favorite auntie. Creative souls. And women who are fearlessly navigating the middle of life. We created a community of women over 40 who embrace the past, appreciate where we are now, and take action to live our best life because it's all about the journey. Welcome, Beth. Hey, We're Beth. So oh my gosh. You. Thank you. I feel like I'm on, on a road trip already. <laughs> Excellent. That's, that's the vibe we want for sure. So Beth, we ask all of our guests our beloved question. If you could run off on an epic road trip with any person living or dead, who would it be? And bonus points if you know where you're going. Well, I will start because I do know where I'm going. <clears throat> The person I chose actually was Sophia Loren, because for me, she, it just epitomizes the beauty and the sensuality and the ownership of what it is to be a woman over 50. Now, a little caveat that um, when I travel with Sophia Loren, it would be her at about, you know, 50, 55 years old. And my, my dream would be to be in Italy with her. Oh. And, and somehow, you know, I magically speak perfect Italian <laughs> and um, she just takes me to all of these places where we get to be in the countryside and we get to try the foods and the wines and um, in, in my fantasy, we even do a little yoga retreat together and get spa treatments and we go shopping and we do all of these glorious things. And she is revered and treated like a queen and therefore I am as well. So that's that sounds fabulous. Awesome. I can, I can see you both wearing red somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Some you kind know? of like scarf with a, you know, I, I was even imagining we'd be in a convertible but then i was like no we we're going to be driven are you kidding <laughs> yeah i just picture driving. her with the big, the big the big sunglasses, sunglasses yeah. and some yeah. type of a, a silk scarf tied over her hair yes. you know so even though you were inside the car she would still be so yes, exactly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes she sounds like a united woman absolutely absolutely yeah. um can you tell us a little bit about Ignited Women and how women and how it came to be, Beth? Sure, sure. So it really began with my own journey through midlife. I was in my late 40s and I was working a really high stress job as a program manager for an educational program. Um, and it was burning me out, frankly. Mm -hmm. I was uh, really stressed out and um, breaking down a little bit. And I just was feeling completely disengaged with my life. And at the time, I, I had always done a lot of personal development. And at the time, I was really moving my efforts more towards yoga and breath work as a way to calm down. And I started considering I was taking a yoga teacher training, got laid off from the program manager job, which was probably the honestly, the best thing that could have happened. So I was at a crossroads. 
do I continue? Do I go back and do something that I'm really not passionate about? Or do I make the leap and dive into something that's really going to make me feel better? And of course, I was in the back of my mind going, I'm halfway through my life and this is what it is. What in the world happened? Yes. Yeah, I think many women have been there. Mm -hmm. um, so I honestly, I started this adventure at, um, thinking that I was going to start a yoga studio. And I was getting some coaching from a woman who was a yoga instructor and she was starting to develop, to develop her own program. And I realized quickly that yes, yoga is still a big part and the philosophy is still a big part of what I do in Ignited Women. And I wanted to really bump it up and really be a stand for other women like me so that they didn't have to have the same struggles that I did in realizing my power and potential as a midlife woman, taking mm -hmm. all of the wisdom that I'd learned over the years and wrapping, not wrapping it up, but letting it shine a little more. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. That gives me goosebumps to hear that story of transformation. I'm so excited for you that you had that realization and kind of had that big picture vision and were able to be brave enough to take that that next big step and look where you are. That's, that's, Thank that's you. amazing. I love those stories. So Beth, can you share what motivated you to, to really like dig in, um, you know, with, with getting this started? Like how did, how did you get it off the ground? Can you talk to us about the process on that? <laughs> Gosh, when I look back, you know, I just had something show up on my Facebook feed of um, from four years ago when I launched my first website, my first, you know, I've since updated it, but my first website. And I remember that moment. I had the website ready and I wouldn't hit the button to get it to go mm -hmm. live because I literally thought as soon as I hit the button, I was going to have thousands of women <laughs> inundating me with, you know, their, their need to be coached. I, you know, so I think it was probably a good thing that I went into this so naively. Um, and I've always been a very passionate person. I was a, I was a, I was a mid light or not middle of the, well, mid, mid thirties, I really became an athlete. And I think that gave me the tenacity and, you know, the taking one step at a time mentality that helped me to build this program. And I've also been someone who's always driven by service. I want to be of service in the world. And when I noticed that I wasn't the only one that was suffering, other, you know, other, that there were plenty of other midlife women who were feeling disengaged and not knowing how to get themselves back into the game again. And Oh, we have a little, a little hiccup with our recording. Just kind of fading away into the background, a difference. Beth, could you repeat that? We had a little bit of a hiccup on the recording. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm plugged directly into my, into my Wi-Fi. I mean, into my internet. These, these things happen. Okay. Right. So where do I need to pick up? Um, we were talking about, I think, um, that you were getting plugged in, um, you know, to how you wanted to um, get this, get this launched. Okay. Yes. So I, th the reason that I had so much passion about launching Ignited Women is I saw that other women like me were suffering, mm -hmm. that we were, I was noticing and, and witnessing my friends and, and people around me who were not as engaged in their lives as they could have been. And and feeling like they needed to fade into the background. And so bringing my passion and my journey in to help others was a big part of this because service is something that's so important to me. And I also really believe in the power. I mean, we as women over 50 are a, a, a population that's growing exponentially because of the baby boomers. And there's never been a time where there's been such a population of educated, engaged, confident, um, and, and really transformed 
women who can make a difference in healing the world and bringing more kindness and more gentleness into the world, which I feel is really needed. Mm -hmm. So were you connecting with folks through the yoga practice? Was that how you were bringing women in to work with you? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I did start, it just happens to be that a lot of the women that I teach yoga to are around, you know, my same age and really related and things would come up in the yoga classes. And then I also, um, because I had worked as a program manager at the local community college, Actually, it was a yoga student who, who taught at the, or who works at the extension program, and they invited me to start doing workshops through the community college extension program. And so that was another avenue where I got a lot more exposure and was starting to do, I started doing weekend retreats, um, you know, and workshops and yoga workshops that would incorporate some things for women as well. So it was kind of like this natural your skills. You're leaning into your skill set yes. to network and expand who you knew on a, a very grassroots level. Because like yes. you said, you were hoping that you were gonna hit that button and everybody would be banging down your door. But as you know, I mean the three of us being entrepreneurs, it takes a lot. You've got to get the boots on the ground at the very beginning and do put in the work and take the actions and not just go. I hope somebody's going to reach out. <laughs> and, you know, and Nicole, it's interesting that it was just recently that I started real, I used, I, I was really compartmentalizing. It was like me as a yoga teacher and then me as a coach. And I realized how much, you know, that when I'm talking about, because a lot of the work that I do is bringing in the wholeness of the woman, all parts are welcome. All parts come in. And I was compartmentalizing a little bit myself. And so now I'm, I'm really proudly bringing in more of the, the spiritual practices, the movement, the guided visualizations and so forth as a part of my process. I love that because you're multifaceted and you as a woman have all these different spokes and you will attract folks. Maybe they vibe with all of them or maybe just one, you know, but at least yeah. you have that that like-minded connection that you find with, with people. I think that's so important because you know, it, it doesn't matter what business you're in, it's relationships. That's what, that's what drives connections with, with people. So that's, mm. that's great. I, I want to run with that idea of, you know, starting in one place and then realizing other parts of ourselves and deciding that it doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be both. It can be all of them. Um, as a photographer, I have always enjoyed coaching my clients through the process of being photographed because um, I feel like what I do is more than just taking a pretty picture. It is really about encouraging folks to bring their best selves and to be their authentic selves. Um, Oftentimes, I hear from the women that I'm photographing that they want to look professional, but they also want to look beautiful, they want to be attractive, they want to be sexy, they want all of those things. And I really appreciate that that is one other component of what we're doing. So I want to, you know, talk with you about this idea of reclaiming your sensual, sexual beauty during midlife and what that looks like and, and how you how you talk about that with your clients? Oh, such a good question. Um, I always go back to my own journey around, around probably around my mid-40s and probably due to menopause and or perimenopause coming on. I noticed that I just wasn't feeling as in touch with my body and wasn't feeling very sensual or sexy. I remember specifically we were moving. This was soon after um, I had been laid off from my job and, and, and we ended up losing our house. It was, you know, around 2008, nine, wow. around yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I had lost my steady income, we made the choice of selling our, you know, short selling our house. And we were cleaning things out and I came across, you know, the, the secret box that we all have of, of the beautiful lingerie from many years ago at the wedding or whatever. And I was like, well, I don't need this anymore. 
so I gave it all away because I, you know, with just sort of mourning the loss and I was 15, 16 years into a marriage and the passion was kind of fading away. And I was really sad about that. And what helped me is really coming back into my five senses and realizing that as a midlife woman, it's n it may not look the same. It may not, it may, you know, I need to manage my energy and my vitality in a different way. And by getting more in touch with looking at myself in the mirror naked and really owning those parts that uh, when I look and I go, ooh, and loving those parts anyway. I mean, it sounds like it, I'm not going to discount it. It is a very important part of, of coming back in and really fully owning your own body and understanding that sensuality and our ability to feel pleasure is a birthright. It's something that is natural and something that doesn't fade away. It just shifts a little bit. So um, I have had a renaissance in that area since and um, am very proud of that and, and very honored that how much uh, passion I have with my husband and how much I carry that in the way that I am in the world, um, the way that I show up, the way that I greet people, a big smile, of course, these days with a, a big smile with a with a mask on often. <laughs> so, yeah, you yeah. know, I, I want to get a mask that has like a clear place in the middle so that somebody can see my smile because it's so much a, a part of who I am. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm curious, like for someone like myself, who I think is somewhat modest and would not consider myself a shy person per se, but right. can be sort of hesitant in that realm how do you encourage women like that who, um, you know, may have a part of themselves that they connect with, but want to fully go a little deeper, but are afraid or don't know how, like, how do you talk about that? Um, I, I, you know, I mentioned the five senses. So I start with the senses like um, tasting. I do an exercise when I'm live with people where we take, I live in the area where the most amazing strawberries grow in Watsonville. And so we'll take a beautiful organic strawberry and close our eyes and take a bite of it and let the juice run down the, you know, your chin or whatever. And so it, it's a reawakening that sense of touch, of taste, of smell. I'd work a lot with essential oils as well. So like, ooh, that feels good. So it may not be about touch or about, you know, sight, looking at yourself in the mirror, but there are other ways of, of opening up that feel a little more approachable. I just did a workshop over the weekend, actually, and, you know, it was, of course, done virtually, so it made it a little more challenging. Um, and we, we did some of these things, you know, with the essential oils and... Um, we did a, a, a little bit of movement where you just kind of lightly touch your skin and, and going down and up and down the sides of the legs and just touching softly and getting, bringing awareness of the pleasure that that can bring in a non-sexual non way, just a way of reinforcing that. Even being out in nature and looking mm. at the beauty around you can elicit and awaken parts that weren't there before. Well, I imagine some of it is really, it's not necessarily um, doing things a certain way, but being reminded of touch. And just doing that on its own is a way to recall um, perhaps past feelings or new feelings and um, getting in touch with yourself in a way that you haven't ever, because you've never been this age and uh, things are different. And so I think even just going through the exercise has got to um, bring things up for women. Yeah. Yeah. And then being there um, to give guidance. I mean, this is a big part of the work that I do is finding um, routines and rituals and 
and structures that keep shifting the thought pattern. We all, we all know that as life goes along, we pick up bad habits. We pick up bad mental habits about how we talk to ourselves mm. and creating new pathways by really interrupting that process. I am constantly self uh, correcting, or you know, I, I wish there were a softer way of saying that, you know, shifting. Um, if I'm talking about something and I say, well, I've never done, and I'll stop myself and say, I'm not going to say never. I'm going to say, in the past, I used to do this. And up until now, I used to do this. And now I do it differently. So mm -hmm. it's, it's retraining. And that act in and of itself um, puts me in the driver's seat, using your metaphor, right? Um, and also puts me um, in a place where I feel more positive because I'm making these small little changes one at a time. So each time I catch myself, I kind of give myself a pat on the back. And so that's what I really teach. I love that. And I love adding the word yet. When you have an I'm not or I, I haven't sort of a negative spin on something and I always add a little yet. Or if I hear my team members getting down on themselves, I'll say yet. <laughs> You're not there yet, but you're getting there <laughs> to kind of leave it open to, you know, we can transform. And I think that's really important. Beth, what is, what is something that like maybe a favorite exercise that you like to do with your clients that um, really is proven to kind of be thought provoking and, and really meaningful for them? Um, one of the favorite things <clears throat> that I do are guided visualizations. And one that's really powerful is taking a look at your future self. Mm -hmm. So I, I give a lot of guidance first about what it is to go into a guided visualization because many women are like, well, I'm not seeing anything. What's wrong with me? You know, it, and, and that can trip up the whole process. So gently guiding them into a place where they are visiting with their, their self 10, 15 years from now and what that version of themselves is saying to the current self. And it is amazing the things that show up. And it, sometimes it's not during the visualization or even right after. Sometimes it can be a few days after that um, understanding just how much inner guidance is available. And I think awakening that, igniting that is the key to understanding and shifting how you choose to be in the world and what impact you choose to have in the mm -hmm. world. I had an experience last year where I was working with a coach and we did this exercise where she had me floating above like on a ribbon and she wanted me to talk about what the next year would look like for me. And one of the things I talked about was how my business shifted and what that looked like and who came to work with me. And it was really, really clear at the time. I had never done an exercise like that before. And I have found myself this fall doing the things that I talked about with her. And it has been really, really wild to watch those visualizations come into reality and and I think even at the time when I had never done an exercise like that before, I was excited about the possibility because I really opened my mind to what could be coming next. Yes. And um, so I imagine that's some of what your women are experiencing. Yes, exactly. And, and so you know, as soon as we finish with the visualization, there's writing exercises so they can go back and look and say, oh my gosh, that did come true. It may not look exactly the same as it shows up in the visualization, and yet it's opening up to the possibilities. Um, one of the coaches that I've worked with often uses the analogy of like an acorn, that an acorn has all of the wisdom within it to become a beautiful oak tree. Of course, the conditions need to be right. The acorn needs to get planted. <clears throat> it needs to have enough water and nutrients to grow into a sprout and then the sprout grows into a little sapling and each evolution 
is is different and then it, it but it has it already has everything that it needs within it without being without asking anything of it and what we need to remember is that we do as well mm -hmm. we have all that we need within us and tapping into that can be such a great source of power yeah that needs to be made into a t-shirt yeah <laughs> you know, <acorn>. you know? <laughs> grow deep roots and and step into your power yeah <laughs> yeah i, I I have not found a better analogy yet. I, you know, I, I try to bring one that's kind of related to fire because that's sort of, you know, the theme of ignited women. And um, Nicole, you mentioned earlier, you know, like the different facets of a woman and uh, you can see behind me the, the logo and the logo is meant to look kind of like a fire, but also like a diamond. Mm. So it's bringing out all the sides. Love it. That's great. Um, I'm going to change directions a little bit. Um, one of the things that you talked about is um, changing physical realities for women in midlife. Yes. And I just turned 50 in August. So I'm beginning to perhaps feel some of those things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about what those things are and how they affect women, particularly in their sensual lives. Yeah, of course, you know, I spoke briefly about it, but um, menopause, perimeni, mer, perimenopause, is, it's a long process, and there's no guidebook to it. There are, you know, are certain, certainly people have written a lot about it, um, and the, just the hormonal shifts alone can shift how you feel about yourself as well as how you feel about your body. I know that it was a big transition for me, not only in my sensual life, but also um, when I realized I didn't have the endurance that I had any longer, or, you know, my, I look down and I'm like, what happened? My, you know, the, my skin is kind of sagging a little bit. What, what? Um, and, and it does, it happens quickly. Um, and that doesn't mean we are not beautiful and, and, and can shift into a, a place where we accept where we are. Um, there are many, you know, I don't really do a lot in, in terms of coaching around health or, or supplements, but there are many things that I've done shifting my diet, shifting um, the supplements that I take to really support me through the hormonal changes that are occurring. Um, and another and have, you, have you found that to make, make a difference, Beth? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, you know, again, I'm not, what's worked for me um, yeah. is maca root, taking maca root um, supplements. And there's also, I really love the work that Christiane Northrup does around menopause. She wrote um, a book, what is it called? The Wisdom of Menopause. And she actually has supplements that I took for a while as well that really quelled the night sweats and, you know, all of the hormonal fluctuations that happen. Um, so it, it's a really a personal journey. There are things that, that, uh, that can be of great help. And I think number one thing is making sure you're getting adequate rest and mm -hmm eliminating as much stress out of your body as you can because you know the cortisol I, cortisol is the stress hormone and with all the other fluctuations as we're going through menopause it can really wreak havoc on how you're feeling in so many aspects of your life well and so, i can imagine that if you are feeling crummy in all that you just listed your yeah. libido is going to go yeah <laughs> <gonna> <laughs> Thing on your mind because you just you're fatigued you're feeling crabby you're not loving the way that you're looking you know just because of everything that's going on with perimenopause so I love how you've tapped into well these are the things I need to focus on personally so that I feel my best self I'm showing up as my best self and then having the potential to to unlock what kind of like the acorn, like we yeah. all have it inside of us. And, and I know you go through seasons, right? Like I, 
I'm, I'm kind of coming towards the end of my, my child rearing season in that I have a 13 and a 17 year old. Well, I'm going to blink and they're going to be off doing their thing. And my husband and I are going to be looking at each other across the kitchen table and like really working to reconnect and going, oh, I don't, I'm not tired from dealing with raising my kids. And now we can really reconnect and focus on getting back to who we were prior to raising our children. Because I think we don't give ourselves enough grace with the different seasons that happened in our life. And it's not necessarily just child rearing. It can be, you know, caring for a parent who is ill or elderly. It can be going through a huge career change. It can be, you know, like crazy symptoms of perimenopause that just have you completely off kilter. Like all these things can, I think, really negatively affect that sensuality and that, that connection for who you are and, and your desires and just keeping that alive, whether, whether that's with a partner or solo, it doesn't yeah. matter. You know what I mean? Like I, think <laughs> yeah. I was reading something the other day where it was talking about um, orgasm as self-care, which, and it was saying, it was like giving all these statistics about how it can decrease the, the stress hormones that are released and it can um, cause the endorphin release and it just better sleep. And all. I was like, that, well, how often do we hear that? Right. We hear self, you're like, Oh, massage, <laughs> walk and go to the gym. Like nobody's ever going and make sure you get an orgasm today. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, like talk about because, and I love, I am a huge fan. I I'm a little late to the party, but I just got into um, Frankie and Grace on Netflix. Oh my oh, God, love that uh -huh. show. Uh -huh. show. And for those of you that haven't seen it yet, you need to go run and binge the show. I, I'm, I'm, I think of the third season, but the two of them in their 70s create a women's vibrator company. <laughs> and what? it's specific for women who ha have gone through menopause, who have arthritic wrists. <laughs> yeah. And they, they yeah, it's like, like um, it's shaped a certain way and does certain has, things. Has LED yeah. lights in the dark and yeah. like prints so you can see things without your readers. Like it's all these things. And yeah. I, I find myself laughing out loud and nodding my head going, yes, like this yeah. is the kind of stuff we need to be talking about that it is, it is okay for women over 40 to be digging into their sensuality and, and really rediscovering who they are because it's very different today than it is when you're 18, 20 and really kind of figuring out who you are in, in, in a sexuality sense. Right. 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 Yeah. And there's, you know, nitric oxide mm -hmm. is released and nitric oxide is one of those neurotransmitters that balances all the levels of your serotonin, your dopamine and everything else. And that's released during orgasm. So there's yet another reason. There you go. <laughs> We're promoting self self care with orgasms yeah, for the, yeah. the rest of the month of October. <laughs> well, and and I think also when you get older, there are certain things that you care less about. So perhaps that means you can be a little less inhibited and just go for it. Because why not? I mean, it, you know, the time has come to just um, if you haven't really gone into, you know, if you haven't really let yourself go in the past because you were worried about what your partner would think or what you were thinking about yourself. I don't know. I feel like now that I'm 50, I care less about what others think. Yes. And I'm, I'm working on what I, you know, my own self-judgment. And um, I think that also connects with your, um, with your sex life, right? I agree. I really agree with that one that, um, yeah, the, the, the more you can, more we can move away from self-sacrifice and putting everyone else in front of us and come back to, again, that acorn thing, come back to who we are on the inside, which is a vibrant being who has a right to be happy, a right to have joy, a right to have pleasure. And, you know, Nicole, I'm kind of backtracking a little bit, but mentioning the reconnection with a partner, that can be, a, you know, kind of a, a bumpy road if you've spent 
many, many years only focused on raising your children. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, making that shift, you, you got to allow the grace for that and got to have got to allow the time and the courage to say what and, and, and understanding of what you really want. Mm -hmm. That is a, is a key part of it is that I have a lot of women who come to me and they're like, I really don't know what I want because they've gotten really disconnected from it, from not putting themselves in the picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and don't you think, you know, some of this is about feeling worthy of those feelings of desire and feeling sexy and, and how you imagine yourself and even how you imagine your intimate life with your partner. Um, you know, I, I think when, when I was reading a little bit about you, Beth, you talked about this idea of worthiness and, yeah. and, and struggling with that, which I think a lot of women struggle with. And I wonder if you can talk about that aspect of it and how it um, connects specifically to you, but also to your work and the work with the women um, that, that come to Ignited Women. Yes. Great, great question. Um, <clears throat> The, my worthiness showed up. Brene, Brene Brown, I, I, something that I read that she did, she talks about how women or people hustle for their worthiness. That that was the primary focus of my life for a long time, is proving that I was enough to be here on this earth. And shifting that mindset into believing that starting from the place that I'm enough, that I'm divine, simply for being here and really focusing on how I want to feel. So a lot of the work that I do is based on the work of Danielle Laporte and the desire map. And that work is finding key words that, that really represent how I want to feel in my life. And then repeating those words, creating that new pathway, as I spoke of earlier, to really let them become the primary place, a primary starting point, and something that I can jump back to if I, I start to feel like, oh, I don't deserve this. I don't, uh, 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 you know, it's like, I'm divine. That's one of the words. That's one of my words. Ignited is one of them. That's how I named my program is from doing this process. Ignited, divine, bold, and connected. So constant reminders bringing it back, getting, really figuring out what it is that I want or what it is a client wants, owning it and finding a pathway to get there one small step at a time. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't come into this sense of unworthiness overnight, mm -hmm. or we may have due to a trauma, but, you know, something <clears throat> early in our life shifted into unworthiness. And to come out of it, it's not going to be an overnight process. And the simple act of going through the process and of sticking with it and sticking through the rough par parts is what brings the worthiness. Because mm -hmm. I realized when I did it, that I valued myself enough to put myself through the painful process of recalibrating the way that I see the world. Mm -hmm. When you were saying those words, I, I love that concept of sort of creating the labels of the things that you want for yourself, that you want to step into, even if you're not there yet. And I would think that the if you did like a journaling process where you had those words at the header and every night at the end of your, your day, you list, what did I do today that was bold? What did I do today? that made me feel ignited? What did I do? You know, even if it's just one or two things that you're jotting down, it doesn't have to be a laundry list of things, but I can imagine over time, when you look back at those, you're like, look at me stepping into this. And it just would help to reaffirm, yes, I am on the right path. And, and even questioning if you're presented with an opportunity, is this going to touch on one of my words? Exactly. Or do I need to walk away from this because it's really not going to serve who I want to be, right? Yes. So, yeah. But taking the time to do that because oftentimes we are, we are pressured to, whether it's internal or external, to say yes to the things that really don't serve us and, and aren't 
aren't going to fulfill us the way that we need. So, yeah. I, and I, it's a, a big part of it is celebrating the small victories, mm -hmm. celebrating the small progresses. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is key to making the deeper transformation is, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that exact exercise is one that I do and that I recommend to others. So we're on the same page with that. Yeah. yeah. I love that, Nicole. I think it's a lovely idea of just having examples each day to reinforce the words that you've selected, you know, the feelings that you want to have around this, this journey. Because especially, you know, we're going to be rolling into the new year soon, right? Yep. And everybody sets their intentions and their, their goals for the new year. But I would love to move into 2021 with a list of three to five words of who I want to be, you know, especially because I'll be turning 50 next year. So um, that's, that's a good goal for me, Beth. So I appreciate you. Bringing awesome. That. Awesome. And I am going to be doing a desire map um, virtual workshop where you could learn to do that. So. That's fantastic. <laughs> Cool. So can you share, I saw on your Instagram account and I actually shared it with Sandra when I found you and said, Oh, we need to have Beth on the podcast. And let me tell you about this, this amazing event that she did. And so it was the self marriage oh, uh, ceremony yeah. for women that you had been working with. And I just, I was in love with the photos from it and just the whole vibe. Um, how did that come to be? And, and how, how did that impact the women who were involved, including yourself? I loved it. Wow. Yeah, that, um, I, I was so thrilled that the moment of just utter bliss was captured in the photograph. Um, it was a process. It was actually, I was um, at a retreat where a coach showed me, she had learned it, you know, kind of got passed along this idea of a self-marriage. And we were given instructions or um, each person is given instructions beforehand of how to prepare, um, coming up with, you know, coming up with your sort of vow to yourself, having something that represented that vow. At the time, it was, um, I had this, this saying, if blossom into the flower, blossom into your flower and the bees will come. Mm. And that was something that really spoke to me. So I had a, a, a little anklet that was, mm. you know, sort of would be like my wedding ring, later turned into um, a tattoo on my arm on my 50th birthday. Cool. The only one that I've got um, that is a constant reminder of me to blossom into the fullness of who I am. So that's the effect that it's had on me is permanent ink on my arm. <laughs> And a permanent reminder of yeah. being bold and being in my brilliance. I, you know, I, some of the other women have gone on to create their own uh, entrepreneurial businesses, or one of them was a singer, and she's since, you know, released an album. So I think the beauty of it is the process leading up to it. So the self reflection, the self trust. And, and the clarity about what each woman wanted, and then being witnessed in such a vulnerable way. I really thought, oh, it's going to be a five-minute ceremony. Well, you know what? And I got up, and I stood on that rock, and I was completely gone from my body and completely full of bliss. Um, and even talking about it now, I get goosebumps because it's well, so alive in me now from everybody that was there because they were all supporting you yeah. and really listening to what you were saying and vibing off that too. So that must have been a beautiful experience. And the, the setting looked beautiful. Yes, yes. I, and I, I have a live retreat next summer, really hoping we're going to be able to do that because I, um, it's up in the Redwoods here in California. And so mm -hmm. I want to, there's this beautiful, it's called the Enchanted Forest. And I want to take the women up there and do the ceremony there. Wow. That is so awesome. So awesome. I loved seeing the photographs too. Yeah. When Nicole shared that with me, I was like, Ooh, that, that is, you know, like who, who doesn't want to make that kind of commitment to themselves yeah. Yeah. when, when, when you're ready to do that. Um, so I have one last question for you, which is what, what do you think ultimately women, like, what are they seeking when they come to you and, and are part of Ignited Women? 
I think initially women come because they want to be seen and they want to be heard and understood and not feel so isolated and um, as if they're supposed to fade away. Mm. And I think what they get are tools, you know, an awakening because a lot of times, you know, I've been to workshops where it's like, yes, yes, this feels really good. And then I leave the workshop and within a few days, it kind of fades away and it doesn't stick. So um, because this is so much of a journey, my own journey, I really believe that women come to get the, the support to create a new way of being, mm -hmm. coming back, returning, reclaiming who they are by breaking through all the resistance that's been built up. It's sort of like chipping away and finding a diamond underneath of it um, because it's all there within us. So the, the true belief that there's nothing outside of you that you need to be fully satisfied and fulfilled with your life, that everything is within. Beautiful. That is beautiful. That's a, that's a lovely way to, to sort of wrap things up today. I love that. Beth, can you share with our listeners, uh, you know, how can, how can people reach out to you on social media? Where can they find information about your coaching and your retreats and your workshops? Sure. So I'm at Ignited Women on Instagram. I have um, a page called Ignited Women with Beth Nelson on Facebook. And then my website is ignitedwomen.net, where you can get connected, learn about my upcoming offerings, learn a little bit more about me and my philosophy. And I've got several blog posts, um, kind of took up a little break from that. I'm, I want to get back into it now. So, the, But there's some really good things in there. And in Instagram, there's plenty of short videos um, just with some tips and ideas to keep you motivated and on track for living your most ignited life. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much, Beth. It's been such a pleasure having you today. It's been really fun. I've so enjoyed I could, this. I could speak to you all day long. Like this conversation <laughs> could have gone on for days because we are just, we are vibing here today. So thanks so much for hopping in the, uh, the convertible with us. Absolutely. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Messy Middle Road Trip podcast and not only learn new ways to connect with yourself, but are curious about how you can add more pleasure into your life. If you want to keep the conversation going, visit us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or at MessyMiddleRoadTrip.com. And if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to the podcast and leaving us a rating and review so we can reach more amazing middlers. We are looking forward to our next road trip with you. Until, until then, thanks for riding shotgun.